So one of the things I get asked about a lot is the idea of multiple protagonists. Can you have more than one protagonist in your story? Can you have more than one antagonist in your story? And the answer is yes, but you have to be careful that you're not confusing protagonists with side characters. And it comes down to whose story is it? So situations where you're going to find a lot of characters, the biggest is going to be on TV and in books where you have a lot of storylines going at one time. Uh, examples of shows with large casts would be Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Martin, Living Single, Friends. Which one of these has multiple protagonists and which one of them just has a large cast? Well, it comes down to, is it their story? So in situations like Fresh Prince and Martin, you have a main character who has characters who come in and out of their lives. On shows like Friends and Living Single, you have a show about a relationship between the characters. And so there you have a situation where you have multiple protagonists. To make it clearer, let's take a look at SpongeBob. So on SpongeBob SquarePants, you have SpongeBob, Patrick, Squidward, Mr. Krabs, Sandy, sometimes Plankton. Some episodes you have SpongeBob and Patrick, some episodes you have Squidward and SpongeBob and Patrick, and some of them you have Mr. Krabs and SpongeBob and Patrick. And some of them you have Sandy and SpongeBob and Squidward. What's the difference? Every single episode has SpongeBob. Think of one episode of SpongeBob that does not have SpongeBob in it. There are none. It's SpongeBob's story. Everybody else are side characters who come in and out of his life. Important, yes, not the main protagonist. So let's take a look at situations where you do have clear dual protagonists. And the two easiest ones to look at are Finding Nemo and Frozen. So for Finding Nemo, you would think this is Nemo's story. I mean, his name's in the title and everything, but it's not called Nemo, it's called Finding Nemo. And who's doing the finding? His dad, Marlin. Marlin is in the movie as much or more than Nemo is. Think about how the characters are introduced. When we first see them, we see Nemo and Marlin together. Throughout the story, even when they're separate, it's about their relationship and trying to get back together. You cannot have Finding Nemo without Marlin. You cannot have Finding Nemo without Nemo. Both of them are dual protagonists because it's their story together. So what about Dory? Dory comes into the story as it's progressing. She is taking part in their story. It is not Dory's story because it's not told from her point of view. It's told from their two points of view. Dual protagonists, but not Dory. If you want Dory to be a protagonist, you gotta wait 12 years. Example number two would be Frozen. In Frozen you have Anna, Elsa, Kristoff, Olaf, and we'll throw Sven in there too, even though he's a reindeer. Who's the protagonist? Who's a side character? Or are they all of them protagonists? Who do we see first, relationship-wise? Anna and Elsa. And every time we see them together, it's about their relationship together. And even when the movie splits them apart, it's about them trying to get back together to solve the main big problem, which is the frozen whatever, whatever. Kristoff, Olaf, and Sven come in partway through the movie. This is not their story. They are side characters taking part in Anna and Elsa's story. So Anna and Elsa are the main characters. Now why not one over the other? Well, because if you take Anna out, then it's just the story of Elsa freezing everybody. If you take Elsa out, then it's just the story of Anna waking up in the morning. It's about their relationship together as sisters, and therefore they are dual protagonists. As far as dual antagonists, you see this all the time, uh, superhero movies especially. They'll work against one bad guy, the bad guy will get replaced by another bad guy, or you'll have multiple bad guys working together. That kind of thing happens a lot.